Thank you for joining me today. Uh, last time, last video tutorial, we talked about basic photo development using the GIMP. Today we're going to go a bit more advanced and focus primarily on uh, balancing a photo between light and dark areas, brightness and shadows. If you uh, remember this photograph, this is the uh, one we used in the basic GIMP tutorial. And if you recall, there are uh, some light and dark areas. Uh, even in the final version, we had the overtly bright grass here and then some dark, deep shadows that really almost take away from the overall effect of the photo. And this is the one that we used on the, this is what we had after we did our development. And here's the original. What we're going to do is we're going to take this original and develop it a different way to try to balance these dark and light areas. So what we're going to do is we're going to open our favorite program, GIMP. Once GIMP is open, we are going to open our file. And that's right there. Now if you recall, the first thing I like to do after opening a file is to duplicate it. So we're going to go Control D to duplicate. And we have our untitled window here. We're going to close the original so we're not messing with that. We're actually going to move this over to a different window. We really don't need that. Uh, layers we will need, so we're going to leave that here. And again, I'm working in uh, Ubuntu. Uh, but GIMP is available for Macintosh and Windows as well. And I know for Windows and Ubuntu it works pretty much the same, so you should have no problems following this tutorial. Okay, now that we have the photograph here in GIMP, this is a two-part process. The first is going to be balancing the light and dark areas, and then the second is the development, which, ironically enough, is like that basic development that I showed you in the previous tutorial. Uh, depending on how much time the balancing takes depends on whether or not I will be able to show you the uh, full development in this video or I may have to do another one just for just kind of as, as a tag on as to final development. Alright, first thing we're going to do is duplicate that background layer and I'm going to entitle this uh, step one Let me put my space in the right spot there. Okay. Now, there's essentially going to be four layers, and there's, ironically enough, four steps. This first layer, the first thing we want to do is we're going to go into colors, we're going to go autos, and we're going to just stretch the hue saturation value as far as it automatically will go. As you can see, this photo really didn't have anywhere it could go. That's why it doesn't appear to have changed. Now, we're going to save this as an XCF. And we're going to go uh, L light shadow balance.xcf. Remember, XCF is GIMP's file format and it allows a lot of things. Now, we're going to duplicate this layer, and you can see GIMP automatically increments anything after the pound sign to the next number. So if you start with step pound one, the next one is pound two which makes it nice and easy. Now what we're going to do with uh, pound 2 is we are going to desaturate this uh, to luminosity. We're going to hit OK. Now we're going to work on bringing out these shadows and the best way to do that is to actually invert this. Okay, And you see how everything that was overtly dark is now overtly light and vice versa. Conversely, the light areas were dark. This is exactly what we want to try to bring up the balance in this. The next thing we want to do is change the layer mode to soft light and you can already see a difference as to how it's balanced. Okay, But we don't want 100% opacity. We're going to drop it down to about 50. Now we're going to duplicate this layer and we're going to repeat the process and set the uh, opacity or transparency of the layer to 75. Okay. Now, if you look 
there at the original, what we started with compared to what we have now with two of them, you can see how much more detail was actually brought back in. Now the last step is actually dup duplicating this step one, bringing it up to the top here, and right now what you're seeing is that just that layer because of our mode being normal. We're going to change that to a darken only and we're going to change the opacity down to about 37 percent. We just want to darken it a little bit, not much. So what we have here, just to recap real quick, we started with the original background layer. We duplicated it for step one. Step one was simply stretching the hue saturation value as far as we could. The next thing we did was we grayscaled and inverted that and in, in essence we're creating a, a type of layer mask and we're using a mode of soft light which allows the uh, layer to be seen through as if you were shining a light through it. And we're going to do that twice to get as much information as, as we can from that image. The first one's going to be at 50%, and then we're going to increase that to 75%. Again, just trying to bring out as much of this shadow detail and water detail as possible. The final step is to darken it just a tad uh, so that we're getting, we're getting closer to that uh, overall balance that we're looking for. Now, the next thing we want to do is we want to go ahead and save this. Now that it's saved, we're going to merge these visible layers. Now before you merge, you want to make certain there's no eyeball next to that background layer. You can just click on it. If there is one, just click on it. It disappears. So we're going to right click on one of these layers and go merge visible layers. And it'll give you a variety of options. We did not change the image size, so we don't need to do any, worry about any clipping or expanding. It doesn't matter we want to leave the uh, invisible background layer here uh, just so we can see the difference as we move forward. So let's hit merge. Now just to show you what I was talking about as far as seeing the difference, you put the eyeball back next to the background image. There's the original and here's the new. You can already see where it brought in so much more of the shadow down in here and so much more of the grass back in here. I mean that's looking pretty good. Still have a little bit of ways to go and it looks like I do have time so I'm going to go ahead and walk through real quickly the levels, curves, and saturation. So we're going to go levels, we're going to go colors, levels, and this is identical to what we did in the basic development. We're going to adjust our levels here to just kind of give us an idea. And as you go, you'll learn that you automatically want to try to get the two end pieces here. And then we're just going to fiddle with this to try to get a darkness that's comfortable without being too comfortable. Then we're going to hit OK. Now we're going to go ahead and do our curves. And again, colors, curves and we're going to move this over so we can see it. Typical S curve, we're going to start with that and as you can see when I brought up the higher end start to get a little bit blown out here so we're going to keep this kind of down. We're actually going to increase our uh, shadows just a little bit and we're going to keep this <laughs> we could almost go too far but we don't want that. We just want to keep it as balanced as possible. And right there looks to be right about there is about the best balance we're actually going to get. Now the final step, anybody remember? Hue and saturation. Okay. Now when we developed this before we maxed out the saturation. Just because we get away with it. Doing that now, as you can see, almost does too much. So we're going to drop this down to around 15, 20. Uh, we're going to go into the cyan color and actually adjust that hue. 
and make it a touch darker so that it looks like water back here in the background again. And we're going to adjust that saturation. Uh, probably about like that. Let's go to a darker blue. Ah, okay, there we go. That's more what we're looking for. We can make it black and white. Okay, right about there. Now let's go back to the master. Our greens look good, our trees look good. So we're going to go ahead and hit OK here. And lo and behold, I forgot to label this saturation. Okay, let's go ahead and do our random save. And that's what we have. That's what we're left with. Now let's compare it to the original that we started with. World of difference. Uh, you look here, this is really distracting and disturbing as is the water down yonder. So we're going to make that saturation available and just look at the difference. We can tell, okay, this is some uh, brush that hasn't fully bloomed or blossomed in a lot of, a lot of uh, dormant branches right here on the right. Uh, we also have some of those on the left. We can see the path through the shadow right here where it was really dark and we can actually see the water through the trees. That is a well-balanced photo. Now granted, due to the age of the photo, it's not the best photograph out there. But that is what we have. So, let's duplicate this. We're going to close our XCF to save it. We're going to flatten this image. Uh, right there. And then we're going to save it as a JPEG. Lightshadow.jpg. We're going to leave it at 100%, which is telling us it's going to be about 6 uh, megabytes, if you look at the file size there. Let's hit save. And voila, we are done. Let's close out a GIMP. Now let's look at our three photographs here. We have the original photograph. We have the basic developed photograph. You can tell it's the basic one because all this is really, really too dark. And we still have a little bit of a light issue down there. And now our balanced photograph. Now we can see what this is. And it's still a bit on the bright side. So there's a little bit of give and take throughout the process. You can play with the curves more to try to bring it into the balance that you want. All in all, I think it looks a lot better than the uh, overtly dark one. Thank you for joining us. Keep shooting and have a great day.